projects, portfolios and programmes. A business may have a portfolio of projects and the projects in a company's portfolio don't have to be connected in any way. Um, connected projects, projects that are connected to each other, are sometimes part of a programme. So there might be a programme of projects within an organisation and within that programme there might be two, there might be ten different projects. Projects are standalone or can be part of a programme and of course the programme can be part of a portfolio. So here's a diagram just to uh, illustrate how an organisation should have a portfolio of projects. Some of those projects will be connected to each other in programmes or sub-programmes. Some of the projects could be standalone, but all of the projects will either be standalone or part of a programme. It'd be a good idea for the company strategy to include some risky or more difficult projects within its project portfolio. This is down to the company strategy. Risky projects, by the very term, you know, they might not succeed, but a risky project has very possibly got a very high payback for the company. Introducing a new technology, very risky, but potentially helps the company gain new market share. Or introducing a new product into a new country, very risky, a lot of work involved, but a nice payback for the organisation. So we need a way of classifying projects as to whether they're, they're easy or they're difficult. And here's one way, and that's to suggest that runner projects are really easy projects. Uh, so easy, it's nearly like a process. It's virtually the same every time. Delivering this lecture for me is a runner project. It's nearly the same every time. I'm doing it uh, on this day for the first time and perhaps to an audience for the first time but the content of the lecture is the same. It's a runner project. It's nearly like a process. Repeater projects are the standard business for an organisation. I often say it's what the organisation does. As an example, let's take BMW. Uh, BMW produce um, motor vehicles and every five or six years they produce a new BMW 3 Series vehicle. The 3 Series vehicle, I would argue, is a repeater project for BMW. It's what they do. Uh, this latest BMW 3 Series may have new technology, new materials, uh, different design, but it's what BMW do. A stranger project, sometimes called an alien project, will be completely new to the company. Uh, and as an example, the uh, electric vehicles that BMW are now producing are completely foreign to BMW as a company and they are involving so much risk, so much new technology, it's something completely new to the organisation, we'd call it a stranger project. So who looks after all of these different projects that might be part of programmes or portfolios? Large organisations have a project management office or project support office. Uh, they could call it many other terms as well. And this department, this, this part of the large organisation, is responsible for the project management of all of the projects within the company's portfolio. So they will do things like decide on a common project management methodology they will define what the project management processes are. They will create the master set of project management documents. They will be responsible for auditing projects or reviewing projects. They can help project managers on their career paths, indicating what qualifications are relevant. They might help project managers um, identify mentors to help them develop their project management skills. So a project support office or a project management office is a key part of a large organisation to make sure that all of the projects run to consistent processes, to consistent methods. Here's a 2013 survey on whether organisations have a project management office. And as we can see, nearly three quarters of the organisations surveyed clearly had a project management office to support the process of project management within their organisation. 